welcome to Arts Talk TV. We're putting a spotlight on creativity. Hi, I'm Karina Lawrence and you're watching Arts Talk TV. We're here at the BPAC Collective in Brisbane, which is an initiative with the Brisbane Performing Arts Challenge. And I'm lucky enough to be chatting with one of the professional performers and choreographers for their show this year called On Broadway. Please welcome to the show, Sarah Baca. Hello. Hi. Hi. Thanks so much for being on the show. Now, you're definitely not a stranger to the performing arts industry, in particular musical theatre. No, I'm definitely not. <laughs> a triple threat performer, you featured in musicals across Australia, Broadway and the West End. Mm -hmm. But originally you were born in Brisbane. I was indeed. Yeah, I'm a Bris Vegas girl. I grew up in Maruka. Went to school at the Maruka State School and I went to high school at Kelvin Grove on the north side. Wow. So, yeah. So, some of the musicals that you featured in initially was Cosette that you played oh, yes. in Les Mis. Yes. And then you've gone on and you performed in The Phantom of the Opera, The National mm -hmm. Tour, and um, also on Broadway, mm -hmm. Chicago, Mary yep. Poppins, mm -hmm. both in Australia and New York, yep. Evita, Mrs. Henderson Presents, and mm -hmm. Follies in Concert on the West End. Yes. I've been very fortunate. A lot of right place, right time. And you a know, lot of hard work, I'm a sure. A lot of hard work. Many, many hours growing up. Was there a specific pinnacle point where you went, this is what I want to do with my life? I think it was always that I knew I wanted to be in the industry, mm. but I didn't pinpoint it was musical theatre until I saw, believe it or not, We Will Rock You at oh, QPAC. Wow. <laughs> and I saw it twice, yeah. which was a lot for my family, you know, and, and I just loved it. And I remember seeing there was a girl called Rowena Villa. I think she does production now, she's behind the camera. I remember watching her on stage and she was like, she's fabulous. Yeah. And there was just something about it, 15 years of age, I kind of went click. That's musical where theater. I want to focus my energy. Yeah, but I did want to be a ballerina first. From a young age, to be a ballerina till I was 25, and then move into musical theater. Wow. It didn't quite happen <laughs> like that. I think that's the beauty of the industry, that if you mm. have had significantly great training, then it gives you the opportunity to go where, yeah. where the journey takes you. I, and I do think ballet training can be underestimated, yeah. um, especially when people are wanting to be in musical theatre. Mm. And I think it's honestly one of the best things you can do to try and guarantee yourself a spot in musical theatre, because if you've got great training classically, then you're going to be able to tackle most musicals yeah. that, that you go for. Now, I was privileged enough to watch the show and your vocals were absolutely stunning. Oh. How did you get into, I guess, you know, the leading roles, leading lady? So I always sang. I actually started singing because I broke my arm and I couldn't dance in the dance concert. And <laughs> yeah. So I always was singing from that age mm -hmm. and doing karaoke competitions wow. and funny things like yeah. that. But it was all experience. Like, it didn't matter what it was. Yep. I loved singing. I loved, you know, give me a mic. I loved it. I auditioned for Phantom when I was 17 as a ballet dancer. Okay, yeah. And then when I was in there, they said, after hearing me sing my song, they said, actually, can you sing mm -hmm. Think of Me? And yeah. so it was because of them, really, that I started getting into that mindset of being a leading lady and understudying all those amazing parts. So still getting to dance, but then I got to play some yeah. incredible roles. What's the difference, say, between performing here in Australia to somewhere like on Broadway, New York or West End? Oh, I was asked this by one of the students yeah. when we had our little Q&A the other day, and purely my experience, and it can be very different for different people, mm -hmm. But when I went to New York, I actually felt very proud of mm. being Australian and the talent that we have here because mm. when I got there, I realised actually we're awesome. Yeah. Like <laughs> the, the talent in Australia is amazing. Really good work ethic too. Yeah, really good mm. work ethic. And I, I found myself looking around and going, mm, we have just as good, if not better, people back home in wow. Australia. Working on Broadway was great because I found that there was so many opportunities given to me yeah. through cast members and people I worked with along the way. I'd be invited to, someone was filming a movie, so you get to experience being mm. a little low budget movie or you go and do cabaret nights you'd be invited to. So there was always all these opportunities given mm. to me um, that I loved. Uh, and auditioning there was really interesting because there were so many auditions, yes. which yeah. was, good experience to get that practice up as well. 
And so what's it been like being back in your hometown, <laughs> getting to perform and being part of this it's great... It's really special. Yes. It's really nice. Yeah, I, I love it. I, I always love coming home. I, I find students here really appreciative, really respectful and just good people. Like yeah. really nice. I'm very proud to be a Brizzy girl. What would be your advice to, for up and coming dancers, yes. performers <laughs> that are wanting to pursue a career in the industry? For me, I worked out that when you finish your full-time education, you have to take care of your own career, so to speak, and you, you have to go and go to class yourself. Your mum and dad aren't mm. there to push you to mm. go anymore, to find the money to go to class, and then you've got to go to classes that are going to improve you. So I love hip-hop, believe it or not. But hip-hop was never really going to help me in musical <laughs> theatre when I was, you know, overseas. Mm. So I always was okay at tap, but I was never amazing at tap. Okay. So I'd go and do a tap class. Yep. Or, um, I'd do the things that would help me get work. Yes. So you have to be strategic yep. when you're in that pre-professional part of your career where you're trying to get work, but you've got to have the upkeep as yep. well of yep. staying on your game. Mm. So you've got to think about the things that you're not so good at and so that could be enhance that. and enhance yeah. them so that mm. you're always ready for whatever an audition throws at you. Yeah. So that would be my biggest advice on staying ready for auditions because that's the key. You don't always know when they're coming along. On the West End, I'd get maybe a week. Wow. Okay. And you might have to even prepare material, scripts, all that yeah. kind of stuff. And a week and sometimes days yeah. isn't a lot of time. So I remember there was a point where I was a waitress and I was doing the glasses, you know, and shining them and, and I had my script, script yeah. there and I was going over multitasking, things. Multitasking, yep, <laughs> as always. Multitasking, yeah, so you have to do things like that. Now with this uh, incredible performance uh, on Broadway, they come together from all over yeah. Queensland, um, Northern New South Wales and um, study with you guys or learn the show in a very professional environment and I think you guys prepared the show in like six, seven days, yeah, something like that. Yeah, it was really, really quick. I had a day with them to do a six minute number. Wow. So, and they all picked it up so fast. I was actually really impressed. Yeah. <laughs> so they were awesome. They were really good. They're great kids. Yeah, really fantastic. Great. With all the experience you've had, how important is it, is it to be showcasing and creating these opportunities? I think it's incredibly important. Mm. I think there needs to be more of them. I mm. think that this kind of uh, setting to actually work with professionals yeah. that have been in the industry, uh, not just choreographically, but also to be on stage, I think you learn a lot from the people around you. Mm. So the way that we would be on stage, they can watch that, I hope, and, and learn yes. from it. Yeah, totally. uh, and because if when, when I had, you know, when I was 17, I, I was in my first show, and to be honest, it was like an apprenticeship. Mm. I, you know, I was very young, <laughs> and so I had to watch the people around me, oh, how do they do that? Oh, yeah. they're acting this way, this is the etiquette for this backstage, that kind yeah. of thing. So you learn, like most things in life, from watching, Experience too, watching people. Yeah. Um, there's only so much you can be told, yeah. and sometimes you need an example of... Yeah people coming in professionally and yeah. showing you a scene or two so and true. I think that that's what's magical about this is that collaboration between the professionals both choreographically the way that we're assisting them um, but also actually being on stage with them and giving them the energy mm. that to learn from I think yeah, that's wonderful. something that's so special about this so all right so we have a little fun segment here at Arts Talk TV yes the shutter speed challenge. Ooh, so I love a speed challenge. <laughs> I'm not very good at them. Just well, I'm, I think you'll surprise yourself. Okay, so what's your favourite thing about being creative? It makes me feel alive. Perfect. Yeah. The person you most like to meet used to be Julie Andrews, right? But more recently, like I'm, I love Alicia Keys, oh, which is totally not yeah. musical theatre. But no, I but love, she's an exceptional. Human. I've always loved her, always since what, I was a kid. What would you ask her? Oh, I don't know. I just want to be in her presence. She just seems so cool. Show me. Yeah. I don't Show know. I'd me like the way. To, I'd like to duet with her. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hmm. Let's put that out there yeah. in the universe. <laughs> okay, if you had to label creativity with a colour, what colour would you choose? Oh, I'm like a pink girl. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, pink. yeah. pink's the winner. <laughs> what would you miss most about the creative arts? It's just kind of who I am. Mm. Uh, I think I'd feel very lost without it. Because I feel for the rest of my life and always, no matter what I do, I need to find a way to be creative within it. 
So if I didn't have creativity, I'd probably be very bored. Yeah, <laughs> no, no purpose. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, in one word, what does the arts mean to you? Alive. Perfect. Yeah. Sarah, thank you so much. It's been wonderful to sit across and, and listen to your incredible journey and your experience. Really appreciate you being on the show. Oh, thank you Thanks so much for, for having us. <laughs> <laughs>